Hello everyone, and welcome back to Propway. So as you guys can see, I built this motorized or automatic Black Panther helmet. Let's go! And this build has honestly been one of the most challenging projects that I've done on this channel, but I think it is probably the coolest project I've done on this channel, and I'm super excited to share with you guys how I made it. And before we get on with the tutorial, I would like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. And with the release of the Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer, I felt it was the perfect time to do this project. And of course, Black Panther is one of the coolest characters in the Marvel Universe, if not the coolest. And with the release of the trailer and in honor of the great Chadwick Boseman, it really felt like it was time to do this build. So just a quick overview of this helmet. The actual structure of the helmet was made out of poster board, so yes, you can build it with cardboard. And then I hardened it with resin, and then spray painted it and added some foam pieces. And there will be a template in the description below on how to make the helmet. So if you don't care to motorize it or add lights, all you have to do is assemble the template, paint it, and you're done. And I do want to add that this helmet is 100% a prototype. For me, it was more of a test build to kind of prove the concept and confirm that it can actually be done. And now that I have done it, I think I'm going to really start fresh, make the improvements and kind of fine tune it to really make it a final product. And also make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel and you guys will be the first to know when I post new content. And let me tell you, I got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Feel free to follow my Instagram and TikTok at Propway. And now let's get on with the tutorial. So what I'm doing here is just kind of free sketching parts of the helmet and I'm using reference photos from Do3D and Vec3D and both of them make awesome 3D models so you guys should check them out. So after sketching out this first chin and kind of cheek piece, I trace it out and then I flip it over and do a mirror trace. So then you should have one big piece that looks like this. And now I just cut this out with a pair of scissors. And once you cut out all the pieces for the front of the helmet, you should have something like this. And now when I assemble it, all I'm doing is taking some masking tape and kind of just temporarily holding the pieces in place. For this piece, you can see that there's a little slit and I use the masking tape to kind of hold that together. And what that does is that gives you a nice little three-dimensional piece and a little bit of a curvature. So now I'm just taping this little snout piece to the chin. And again, I'm just using masking tape and this is just going to be temporary. And here's what you should have when you tape that together. So once it's taped together, I just take some super glue and I kind of super glue th that seam on the outside to hold it together permanently and we'll remove the tape later. So here you can see I'm installing the kind of the eyepiece and again using some masking tape to hold it together temporarily. And that's just going to get taped in just like that. And here's what you should have at this point. And now I'm just going to continue to assemble it. Here I'm assembling the nose piece. And again, just use some masking tape for that. And now here are the eye pieces. And this is how you should assemble them. You want to put together this side seam just like that. And then that seam right there is just going to kind of be held in place. You can super glue it if you'd like. And now we're going to take that into kind of that outer eye frame. And now you can see that Black Panther is really starting to come together. And you can super glue all of your seams at this point. And now here I'm going to start assembling the forehead. It kind of looks like a bumblebee right now. But here I'm just using some of this masking tape again to install these big panels. Now another option instead of masking tape is using a little bit of hot glue, but it will take a lot longer to dry. Okay, so at this point in the build, you should have a mask that looks kind of like this. So now you can see that the ears are missing here, so that is going to be the next step, and I will show you guys how to glue that in. So these four white pieces here are going to make up the ears, so again, using masking tape to put those together, just like this, and then we insert it into the side of the helmet like that and we're going to do that for both sides. Now for the back of the helmet, you're going to want to cut out two of these pieces here, and it kind of fits on the back side just like this. 
So again, all those slits, we're gonna close them up with masking tape and it'll get us a nice round shape that looks like this. And once we install it, you'll end up getting a helmet that looks kind of like this. And that's basically all of the poster board construction for this helmet. This last part here, we're just going to finish up the ears. But once that's done, you're pretty much good to go. Now before we get on with the next step, I want to take a quick moment to tell you guys how you can make your own website or your own online store with Squarespace. So these past couple of months, I've been building my own Propway website using Squarespace. And building a website with Squarespace makes it so easy and natural. So with a website like Propway, it only makes sense to share a bunch of photos of my builds with you guys. And Squarespace's photo gallery feature is perfect for that. You can use a bunch of cool templates and uploading and organizing photos is super intuitive. And one of the more useful features is that you can create your very own online store. And that's perfect for Propway because you can sell digital files or physical items. So I can sell the 3D models that I've created like the Hawkeye bow or the Batman chest emblem. Squarespace has all of the tools that you need to start selling. And if you're really looking to take that next step in building your business, you can even buy your own domain to make your brand stand out. So go check out Squarespace for a free trial to build your own website. And once you're ready to launch, you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name by going to squarespace.com slash propway. And now back to the Black Panther build. So before we add the resin, you can see I added some supports on the inside. And now I'm going to be using this resin that I bought from Amazon and I will leave a link in the description below. So for this particular resin, you're going to mix together one part resin and one part hardener and that may vary between different resins, so just make sure to check the instructions on yours. And here you can see I just start to brush it onto the helmet. And I would recommend doing it in thin layers so that you don't get big globs of resin. And here you can see it's nice and glossy, and we let that dry for a little bit. And once that's dry, usually for 24 hours, it'll be fully cured. And here you can see I'm taking out the supports and just testing the hardness. And now you can start removing all that masking tape on the inside. This can be a little tough, especially if the resin soaked through and kind of hardened the tape itself. So now for the inside, I'm going to use this Bondo fiberglass cloth. Fiberglass cloth, I meant fiberglass cloth. So here you can see I'm just going to be cutting up a bunch of small strips. And of course you can use Bondo fiberglass resin for this. I prefer the other resin just because it is non-toxic and has a much lesser odor. So here you can see I'm just placing the pieces of cloth on the inside and then I'm going to get some of that resin and just kind of dab it onto that piece and kind of soak it in it. And we're going to do that kind of across the entire back piece and front of the helmet. And now I'm going to start sanding off that resin to try to get as smooth of a surface as I can. And here you can see I used my brand new Artillery Sidewinder X2 3D printer. And this is going to be for the entire hinge mechanism of the helmet. And this is absolutely one of the best 3D printers that I've used. Here you can see I 3D printed parts for that hinge mechanism. And the best part is that they pop off super easy without having to scrape anything. So the entire hinge mechanism and motorization system was designed by Crashworks 3D. And you can find their parts on Thingiverse for free. And what's amazing is that they have all these instructions and details absolutely free if you download the link. And here is the instruction manual showing what motors to pick, how to assemble all of the 3D printed parts. And even if you don't have any experience with Arduino or coding, this instruction manual will take you step by step through every process. And this diagram right here will show you everything you need to know about how to wire it together. So here you can see these are the pieces that are printed out. And here are the servo motors that I used, and I will leave an Amazon link in the description below for all the parts that I used. So here you can see I just snap it into that motor bracket. And after wiring it all together based on that diagram and assembling it, I got a working hinge mechanism that looks like this. And with a click of a button, you get a motorized hinge. So now going back to the helmet, I want to be cutting out this faceplate here, which I outlined with Sharpie. And this is what that hinge mechanism will look like on the inside. And because I didn't use the fiberglass cloth on the faceplate, I'm just using an X-Acto knife to cut that out. If you did use a fiberglass cloth, it might be too hard and you'll end up having to use a Dremel. 
and make sure you're careful when you're cutting this thing out because it can be pretty hard in some spots. And this is what the face plate should look like. And that's just going to sit right in there like that and should be a nice fit. So now I installed that hinge system, but you can see that the arms of that hinge kind of cover up the eyes. Because this wasn't designed for an Iron Man helmet, it does fit a little different. So as you can see, this horizontal bar piece right here should be sitting above the eyes. So if you want to get creative, you can modify this, but I made this work. And here is the board that I used, which I will leave an Amazon link in the description below for. And all I'm going to do is just snap that into this little breadboard here. And now you have a nice small profile to work with all of your electronics. And now we just do a little test to make sure that everything works and it looks like we're good. So now I'm going to use this putty to fill in the holes on the helmet, specifically behind the ears here. But a lot of people like to use this to kind of fill the entire helmet and then end up sanding it later to get a really smooth surface. So that is definitely a step that you can do. And here I'm just taking it and filling in that hole and we're going to sand it down to make it smooth. And now once everything is sanded, you just want to reprime the entire piece. And I'm using a Krylon filler primer, but you can use any filler primer that you like. So now you can see that there are some rough spots, which we are going to sand down later. But first, I'm sketching in these lines on the top of the helmet, which we are going to be kind of drilling out. And as you can see, I'm just taking a drill and drilling one hole on the edge of the line. And then I take a Dremel with this kind of grinder bit. And we're just going to grind out each of those lines. And basically, these lines are going to allow us to have LEDs shine through, which will be a nice little touch later on. And this step can get a little messy, so you want to make sure you're wearing a respirator. And you want to vacuum up your workspace pretty often, just like this. And when you're done, you should have holes that look like this. And now we're going to cut out the back of the helmet. And as you can see, I sketched out a line with some Sharpie. And I'm just going to use a Dremel with a cutting wheel here. And I do this outside because it can get kind of dusty. So make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. And here I just use an X-Acto knife to just kind of finish that off. And that's just going to snap into place like that. So here I'm super gluing in some magnets to help with that. So the back of the helmet should snap into place like this. I also glued in an elastic strap at the top just to hold it in. And then you can just pull it apart like that. Okay, so I'm just doing a quick test run with a helmet and it is far from perfect, but at least it's functioning to the point where it's opening and closing. And there is the helmet. I'm actually pretty happy that I got this far. Like I said, it is far from perfect and this is very much a prototype, but yeah, there it is. And now we do a few more test runs just to make sure nothing warped too bad. And once that's good, you want to spray paint the entire thing black. And now I'm going to be cutting out some foam pieces using the template. So you want to use the snout piece and then part of that eye piece. And I just used two millimeter thick foam for this. And after you cut that out, you want to heat it up with a heat gun to seal it. And then also we're going to form it into a little bit of a curved shape using this rounded piece. And that's just going to get glued into place right there. And now we're just going to score some lines with an X-Acto knife, not cutting all the way through. And once you heat it up, that line will open up and give you a nice little detail. So here I'm just adding super glue and that's how I glue it into place. And here's what it looks like with the eye and the snout piece. And we're also missing the nose foam piece, but I will add that in later. So now for some of the detail accents, I'm just using a silver Sharpie to color that in. So now for the eyes, I'm just using this perforated mesh, which you can see through when you hold it up close. And this is what it looks like when it's installed. I just cut out some small pieces and glued it behind the eye holes. And now for the final touch, we're going to be using these LED lights. 
which is just run on a 5 volt system. As you can see, it's a nice purple color. And basically, we're just going to install that right behind those slits that we cut out earlier. As you can see, I just held them in place with some aluminum tape and I kind of just weaved it up and down through the top of the helmet and you can see the LED lights through those slits and basically once you wire it into your system once the helmet closes those lights should turn on and these are a little faint which I could definitely improve on on the next version so one thing I didn't show you was these white elastic straps that I glued into place and basically that just guides the opening and closing of the faceplate and as you can see here, I just super glued one half of that onto the faceplate and one half of that onto the top of the helmet. And when you're done, you should have a Black Panther helmet that looks like this. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. This project was super challenging but I learned so much in the process of making it, and I hope you guys learned something as well. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like button and leave a comment, or even if you didn't like the video, leave a comment, tell me what I can improve, tell me what you didn't like. But I am so grateful for all of your support. Building all of these cool things makes me extremely happy, and knowing that you guys enjoy it and that you really learn from these videos makes it even better. So again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.